And we are less than a week away from the Iowa caucus, and we have our representative uh, of the Republican Party uh, joining us in studio right now. Craig Robinson is here and uh, just talking about uh, you know some of the things that are going to be happening next week. Now, you have to realize yeah, a lot of people will be caucusing for the Democratic Party, but there still is a Republican caucus that will go on. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and you're, you're fair on both sides of the mm -hmm. board, uh, Craig, so we appreciate you being here this morning. Let's talk about what will be happening with the Republican yeah. caucus, but then these new changes that we just sure. got done talking about Democrats. How you feel about that and what that might mean? Maybe possibly speeding some, up the Democratic. Some government. of these new changes that the Democrats are doing um, this cycle are actually things that Republicans do. So, okay. for example, um, Republicans don't necessarily have a ballot, and I don't think the Democrats would be calling this a ballot either. Right. Um, but usually slips of paper are provided. Um, and it's it's these are all locally controlled elections, so the county parties are putting it on. And so I, I know when I was with the state party, we really res resisted, like, hey, there's no ballot. Like, we're not creating a ballot. We're not, and so people, typically how it works is you have to go and you just write the person's write name. name. Yeah. Right. So if you're supporting Pete Buttigieg, good luck. But you know, you could write Pete. Right. <laughs> no, but on the Republican side, you know, what's so there's the, no what's ballot. The, what's the purpose of having a caucus for the Republican side when we know that the president is going to be the nominee? Well, sure. I mean, it, it, you can have an uncontested primary too. I mean, we do that too. There's been times where, you know, you're, uh, you know, Senator Grassley's up and no one's challenging him. You still have a primary. There's still a write-in option, and the reason there's usually other things that are going on. But the reason you have a caucus in a non-contested race like this is that there's still a lot of business to do. So that your caucus, if you go and you vote. Uh, or you caucus for Donald Trump, it's still a it's still a business meeting for local Republicans there, where you're going to select three people, um, or, or you're going to select delegates to go on to the the county convention. And this is all the process that starts to become um, a, a a delegate to your district convention, a delegate to your state convention, and then maybe even national convention if you want to go on. So, so there's this other is, business. There's other business. Right. There's party business to go on, uh, representatives for their local precincts, so that if there's, like in my precinct, once there was um, there was a runoff election, um, no one got the 35% threshold. Then the members who were actual members voted on on caucus night, they get to decide. Really? Um, yeah, then, then that vote was made of like 35 people and selected my state representative. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of little things that, that go on here for party organizing, and that's true of Democrats. And so how long would the Republican caucus take on Monday? I would say you'd be in and out in about an hour. Okay. Um, you know, what the Democrats are doing with their preference card is, is this is going to help speed them up, I, I believe. So when you come through the door, you're going to be given uh, a sheet of paper. You're going to say, I'm, I'm supporting X, right? They're going to count those. Right. And then that meeting will start and say, you know, um, can so, so you know, these two are in the front or no, 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 no. It's going to be these are viable. So there's oh, a 15 percent viability. Have a minimum, They'll yeah. calculate that. Oh, okay. And then they will say, if you were supporting someone else, you need to switch. Because in the past, you, you went and you broke off into groups. Yeah. And you had to count the number of people in the group. So part of the issue. Part of, the yeah. Part of the issue you have with that is just. Yeah, you're hurting cats here. I mean, it's a seven o'clock at night, right. and you might have a thousand people at your at your precinct caucus, and telling them to go stand in that corner if you support this candidate is how do you rein someone in and, right. and not they don't move. And so I think this will actually help help them kind of go this through this. This will this will eliminate the people that don't reach that threshold before you even have to start counting. And now we're, you're it right. Lasts, it, it does last a long time. We've done both. Now, We've been at, yep. at both different caucuses. Now where this gets a little bit hairy, I think for some Democrats is, is so we're gonna have this initial number. We're gonna know, um, the it, just like the Republicans, this many people turned out, this is, this is how their vote broke down. I think this is gonna be fascinating, by the way. This is how their vote broke down. But what the other number that that precinct caucus comes up with is they will say, you know, these three or four are viable, and then there'll be a second number, right? And that'll be, and that number will dictate how many, um, you know, how many delegates they get to the state convention 
um, which really ultimately matters. But to me, the first number matters and then the second number also matters. But this is where they say it could be argued who won. Um, I, I'm not quite so sure. I okay, think, they, I think when, it's going to be pretty clear. When people clear. go to caucus, for those that you don't know. You think it is going to be clear. I think yeah. it's going to be very clear. Very okay. clear? Okay. When people go to caucus, how many people will come out of this caucus? Say we have a caucus in this room next Monday. Right. And uh, for the for the Democrats, for example, how many people will be considered? Is there a first, second, and third place? Or is it just, here's our winner? It will be viability. So there's probably four because you got to be 15% of the room, right? So if you had 100 people, you would need you know, 15 people to right. be viable. And so I think that, you know, how many are viable? I don't know, but I think we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about four to five candidates Tuesday morning when we're here next week. Okay. And, and really who finishes first? I think it's Bernie Sanders. I thought coming into this, he was really? the front runner. Okay. I think what Bernie's been doing has been very impressive. I was even, you know, watching via Facebook Live um, the other night. He had a rally in, in Sioux City. Michael Moore was there. AOC was there. It's crazy. Huge crowds. I mean, this is where in this process you can start watching momentum and seeing where people are at. Bernie's got a lot of momentum. Mm -hmm. Now, I know obviously we're proud of our first in the, in the nation status and a lot of people, a lot of eyeballs uh, on us right now, especially in the next six days. Mm -hmm. But why is this so important? Why do we need to show up to make our voices known on either side of the fence? Yeah. Look, Iowans, Iowans, and the reason people complain about Iowa, if they're from other states or candidates who don't do well in Iowa, why do they all complain? Because we have an oversized say in the process. We start, it doesn't matter, there's been thousands of polls taken, right? National and Iowa and this state and this battleground and all that stuff. The, what really matters and the reason why the Iowa caucuses are so important is because this is the first actual vote in this pro nominating process for Democrats. And it will, I think what you're gonna see is, you know, we have a field right now of six kind of perceived viable candidates right. and then there's some other candidates leaving Iowa I think you're you're gonna start we're gonna start talking about two or three people you know you think so yeah I mean I think I think whoever we can make that big of a difference uh, on, yeah I mean we always call the herd you know we we narrow down the field we make it easier really for other states to decide you know because we spend all this time with these candidates they go through it's a gauntlet it's difficult and and we will say at the end of the day look, we think the rest of the nation, you should really focus on these three or four people. Mm -hmm. and, and the order of, that they come out matters too, because I think if it's, if it's Bernie Sanders, number one, and Joe Biden coming in second place, I think really the race becomes a contest between those two individuals as we move on. Until right. Bloomberg drop, jumps in in New Hampshire. Uh, I, I want to give you at least a minute uh, <laughs> to give us uh, your thoughts on the impeachment trial, just yeah. really quickly. Yeah, look, I, I think that this is kind of just craziness. It's hard for me actually to watch because I feel like it's, um, again, I've said on this show before, we know kind of the outcome, the expected outcome. Mm -hmm. and, and I think at the end of the day, you know, to, did was this call perfect from Trump? No, um, were there? He says it was. He says it yeah. was, but I think we all through this process realized things could maybe should have been done differently. The question you have to ask as an individual is: Is this enough to remove a president of the United States? And you might hate Donald Trump, mm -hmm. and you might be saying, "Oh yeah, let's get rid of him." But the thing is, is do you want this litmus test to be used against another sitting president that's some what's other day? Because that's, that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. And I think that's really dangerous. And I think that you know now we see all this talk about John Bolton's book and his right. manuscript and right. all that stuff. I don't know if that really changes things all that much, mm. you know. And and at the end of the day, I think that. Um, this is a process that we're going through, and I think there's going to be a huge sigh of relief when it's over. I actually wonder if, if they censored the president and they could have got some Republican support for it and, and like publicly spanked the president, if that would have been more productive for Democrats now. Right. And then if something else comes up and it's more serious, then the impeachment process is still available to them. I think this is, they've done this now. I think it's going to be, it'll, when it's over, I think the country will take a huge sigh of relief and we're going to focus on a general election. Okay. Right, let's see. All right. Thank you, Craig. Appreciate it as yeah, always.